my light. Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. I'll say that to say this. Coming to you live to tape, 25 feet below the surface of the earth for another special edition of Chaos Corner for today. This date in pro wrestling history for November 10th. Before we get started, I'd like to give a big shout out and happy birthday to the United States Marines. See ya, Profi. And uh, fans, let's, let's give a little salute to the United States Marines. And of course, with it being Veterans Day this weekend, tomorrow, if you will, I also want to salute all our military and armed forces around the world, keeping us safe, fighting for our freedoms. We need to be fighting here at home for our freedoms as we're being invaded. But that's another story for another time. So this goes out to the United States Marines. And tomorrow I'll do the same thing for all our military branches. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to our Marines. Happy birthday to you. Simplify. All right, fans. Guardian of Chaos on the YouTube channel. We will be going through a shorter version. Not a lot of news and notes today for this date in pro wrestling history for November 10th. So follow me here on the YouTube channel as we hop off all the other social media platforms and we get down to brass tacks. School is in session. All right, fans. Follow me on X in real time at Big Daddy GOC. And the GOC stands for the Guardian of Chaos. On Instagram, it's the Guardian of Chaos. I have two accounts on Facebook. That's right, there's two. J Brony, you get to play on words. And Protigio Fidelis El Guardian, in honor of my heritage. Follow me on Gitter, Gab, Truth Social, and soon. I'm already over there, but I will be taking over live on Rumble. There's no presence of the IWC on Rumble. Who knew? We have, a, a, as I said in the opening monologue, it's going to be one heck of a, a patriotic and, and military weekend. We have to bring that back in this country. Stick together. Salute that flag. And remember those we've lost in wars past. And who will probably be losing in the near future as the world continues to spiral out of control all across this planet. And especially here in the United States of America. Stay vigilant. Stay humble. Stay aware. Keep your head on a swivel. Keep your family and friends and your loved ones close to you. Tomorrow is not guaranteed for any of us. Heck, not even today. And with that being said, obviously let's recognize our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because without him, none of this would be possible. And if he is for us, who could possibly be against us in this battle of good versus evil here in 2023? I don't want to get too crazy. I don't want to sober you guys up too much, but stay sober, as I've said. So let's get down to brass tacks and for this much-needed distraction and stress reliever in today's world, uh, hopefully I provide that for you. One man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog for you, the fans. No paywall, no Patreon. I say it every time. No super chats. I'm not here for that. I'm here for you and for me. I say it every time, and I'll continue to say it. In order to get respect, you have to start with respecting yourself. Once you do that, you open other people's minds to respecting you because there's three types of people in this world. Those who don't know what happened, those who wonder what happened, and people like you and me in the United States of America that make things happen. All right, fans, I'm going to get down to brass tacks, as I always say. Thanks for being here. I mean that from the bottom of my heart as you hear the nature sounds of the bunker here on Chaos Corner. Let's start off at November 10th, 1967. Pat O'Connor and Wilbur Snyder defeat Harley Race and Chris Markoff for the AWA World Tag Team titles in Chicago, Illinois. Now, Markoff 
substituted for Larry the Axe Henning, who had his leg broken by the legendary Vern Gagne. Back into the time machine. November 10th, 1972. Lorenzo Perante and Bobby Hart defeat Jerry the King Lawler and Jim White to win the NWA Mid-America Tag Team titles in Nashville, Tennessee. Let's fast forward in the time machine. November 10th, 1984. At a WWF house show in Salt Lake City, World Wrestling Federation champion Hulk Hogan defeats Rowdy Roddy Piper via countout. November 10th, let's stay in 1984. Crusher Blackwell and Boom Boom Bundy, aka King Kong Bundy, win a tag team battle royal in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And if you go back and look at that card from 1984, what an incredible card. Uh, everyone from Nick Bockwinkle uh, to tag teams uh, that were, uh, I can't even remember as I stumble, rumble, mumble, but you know you don't like it when I get uh, tongue-tied and tongue-twisted here on Chaos Corner. But that show in 1984 in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where Boom Boom Bundy turned into King Kong Bundy later on, uh, Bruiser Brody was on that card as well, uh, like I said, Nick Bockwinkle, and later on in that same card, Crusher Blackwell defeated Bundy. So how about that for useless tidbits of pro wrestling history here on Chaos Corner? Back into the time machine. November 10th, 1987. Matt Bourne defeats Ted Arcidi in Midland, Texas to win the world-class Texas heavyweight title. If you remember something about Ted Arcidi, he was the world record bench press holder at 705 pounds. Let that marinate. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, as I always say. Let that sink in. 705 pounds. Back into the time machine here on Chaos Corner. November 10th, 1993. WCW holds its Clash of Champions at the Bay Point Center, the Bay Front Center, in St. Petersburg, Florida. Here's the lineup. Here's the results from that night in 1993 for Clash of Champions. WCW International Champion Rick Rude versus Road Warrior Hawk ended in a double countout. What a matchup that was. The Shaq Master, and we know the legendary story of Typhoon, a.k.a. Tugboat, a.k.a. The Shaq Master, one of the most memorable botches of all time. The Shaq Master defeats the Equalizer with a simple bear hug slam. Less is more. Keep it simple, stupid. I say it all the time. Unlike 2023 and the athletes and the talent today and the stars today, which are fantastic, unbelievable. Everyone's got to get their stuff in. Everyone's got to get their shit in. You come in and do all your spots, and then it's my turn, and I'll do all my spots. And, and 15 different uh, finishers that everyone kicks out of and become false finishes. No ring... Uh, uh, ring uh, in, uh, Emotional investment, ring psychology, and storytelling in 2023, for the most part. And uh, you see how I'm a little tongue-tied and twisted. I had just a triple bag of black tea. I'm on my water and lemon, feeling pretty damn good. But I'm going to say this like I say all the time. Back in 06 and 07, when I was managing the outcast killers of Diablo Santiago and Oman Tortuga, we went up against the NWA World Tag Team Champions, Team 3D, a.k.a. Bully Ray and Devon, the Dudley Boys, in a series of tables matches. And I, and I said it yesterday and the day before. We get back into the locker room, some unbelievable bouts back then. And Bully Ray, jokingly, Says, give Big Daddy five spots and he'll fuck up four. I consider that to be a compliment coming from a two-time Hall of Famer, co-host of Busted Open Radio, and host of Busted Open After Dark. Perhaps one of the greatest tag teams of all time. You guys get that, right? You may not look at it that way, but, but I do because I still held my own. Covered up the spots because you geeks, nerds, dweebs, virgins. Well, no offense, man. Gay fame. You guys didn't pick up on it. And I still took the fucking bumps. That's right. And I say it every show. Also, on that card, 
the WCW television champion Lord William Stephen Regal defeats Johnny B. Bad, a.k.a. Mark Merrill, with a fruit roll-up, so to speak, and a handful of tights after Johnny B. Bad was distracted by Sir William Bill Dundee. So Sir William with Lord Stephen William Regal. How about that? Also on that same card, Stunning Steve Austin, a.k.a. the future Stone Cold. I'm gonna whip your ass because Stone Cold said so. Defeats the loose cannon Brian Pillman after Colonel Parker shoved Pillman off the top rope. Simplicity. Now, I know WCW wasn't the greatest product in the early 90s. They were all over the place. The booking was terrible. Uh, they have changed... Uh, Hands from NWA to Jim Crockett Promotions to, to Ted Turner and WCW. And then they caught lightning in a bottle again when they had the Monday Night Wars. And then in their early 2000s and Vince bought it out, it turned to garbage after that. But you guys get that the time frame here as we jump back into the time machine here on Chaos Quarter. Uh, the continuation of Clash of Champions in 1993 for WCW on the rest of that card the WCW United States Champion Dustin Rhodes defeats Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, with a small package. Again, simplicity, nothing crazy, not 10 different uh, amazing maneuvers that are supposed to be finishes that people kick out of. It's getting old, man. Whether it's AEW or WWE doesn't do it as much, but it's getting old. And that's coming from a guy who's had over 50 years in this business as a scout, an agent, a researcher, a historian, a smart, and a mark. That's right, I'll say it. I'll even say I'm a mark because I've been a fan. We're all marks at one point or another. No offense to anybody. I'm a mark. I'm proud of it. And of course, my over three decades, 30 plus years as a pro wrestling manager, as I already said, who took the fucking bumps. And I apologize for cussing. In the ring with over 30 WWE Hall of Famers. Not to mention the other veterans and heroes and legends and young lions and rookies, people that I've mentored. That's right. Look at the channel. Two and a half thousand videos of my career. This Chaos Corner podcast covering the current product from AEW to the WWE. All the history on this channel and all the events and stars that I've been involved with that were on the same events as me. You're not going to find every, anything like it on this channel. That's what makes it different than every other channel that's out there in, in this podcast, IWC Wrestling World. You guys get that, right? I give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. As I always say, raw dog. And if you don't like it, you can change the fucking channel. Leave a comment, man. Uh, email me, inbox me, and hit that like button. No offense. On that same card for Clash of the Champions in 1993... The Nasty Boys defeat Sting and Davy Boy Smith when Nobbs pin Smith with interference from said Rick Rude, who attacks Smith prior to the match, leaving Sting to virtually wrestle the Nasty Boys by himself. In the main event, woo, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair defeats WCW World Champion Vader, Vader, Big Van Vader, Leon Bullpower or White when he was in the AWA via disqualification when Vader hit the ref. Simplicity, again, as I always say, I'm not saying it was the greatest, it was the best. It leaves a little bit to be desired. But compared to what we have today and, and, and the booking, and again, there's a lot of good stuff out there today. I'm a big fan and I still watch it. I'm still involved with it. As you guys know, next weekend at the Greater New Haven JCC, it's Wrestle in Paradise. Mania in Paradise. L Ref's final count, final stand. For Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, you're not going to want to miss it. All the legends will be there. All the stars, all the championships will be on the line for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Next weekend, November 18th at the Greater New Haven JCC here in the shadows of Titan Towers in the Greater New England Tri-State Northeast area. Mania in Paradise. L Refs, last stand, last count as a part of the Zebras of Justice, one of the best referees in this whole damn area. And you know who the Paradise Four are. Four legends, four men that worked under the guidance of the WWF and WCW. 
the owner of Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, in the WWF from 84 to 92, New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Famer, and that would be one Mario Mancini, our head trainer in WCW and the WWF as a part of the Four Horsemen, pretty wonderful, power and glory, the Young Stallions, and that would be pretty Paul Roma. Another one of our co-trainers, second-generation grappler, trained in his basement under his mother and father, who were also grapplers, cousin to Roberto Soto, and that would be Mr. Paul Perez. And then there is, of course, at six foot six, now down to about 300 pounds, and he looks marvelous, tremendous, and that would be the big man. Big Dave Paradise, a.k.a. Big Steve Tracy. And if you're looking for a good meal, go down to his restaurant, The Rib House. You won't find better ribs or better service or a better atmosphere at The Rib House right here in the Constitution State. And Big Steve Tracy, does it get any better than that? I don't think it does. So again, November 18th, next Saturday night, live, Mania in Paradise, presented by Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. You're not going to want to miss it, especially El Ref. His final count, his final stand. Back into the time machine. November 10th, 1997. Lie, cheat, and steal. Eddie Guerrero defeats Rey Mysterio Jr. with a simple frog splash. I think I got it down. A simple frog splash to regain the WCW Cruiserweight title in Memphis, Tennessee. And if you remember, earlier that year in 97, one heck of a match uh, the previous month between Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio at Halloween Havoc. Go back out and check that out. It's on YouTube. It's on the network. I'm the cock, the peacock. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. I'm, no offense. Let's stay in November 10th, 1997. And we covered this at length yesterday. The Montreal screw job between Brett the Hitman Hart and Shawn Michaels. Well, here it is, November 10th, the very next day. Chance of, we want Brett, we want Brett, and bullshit, bullshit, rang out through the arena on Monday Night Raw, as Shawn Michaels, the heartburned kid, cut a promo about how he beat Bret Hart with his own hold, uh, a.k.a. the sharpshooter, and sent him down south with the rest of the dinosaurs. Talk about insulting the business and the rest of your co-workers. And then half the click ended up down there anyway, Shawn. I guess he's repented for all his ways of being an asshole. But let's remember. 97 in those years, in the middle of the Monday Night Wars between Nitro and Raw. And of course, now in 2023, the breaking news of how the Billy Corgan's NWA dropped the ball to get back on TV. That company is basically kaput. And now NXT is going to the CW. It looks like Raw is going to be off USA. Who knows where SmackDown is going to go. We also have a Rampage and, and Collision and Dynamite on TBS and TNT. You know they had the brief Tuesday Night Wars between NXT and AEW Dynamite, which AEW whooped their ass. But now the ratings, although a minuscule compared back to the Monday Night Wars, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on going into 2024 if the world is still here uh, and we don't uh, get on that tilt that they're talking about and all the meteors coming that's another story for another time just prayer up and stay attention and pay attention uh, we'll see what happens going into 2024 with all these different companies and what's going to happen including impact wrestling going back to its surname of tna who knows what's going to happen with the new japan uh, uh, the, the the minor league company of the AEW Ring of Honor. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with any of these companies and where they're going to end up. It ought to be interesting. Right around the corner next week, besides Mania in Paradise for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, you have full gear coming up for AEW. Followed quickly right after that by the legendary WWE Survivor Series before we end out the year. And then in December, I believe... AEW has Wrestle Dream. There's a lot coming up 
uh, all kinds of, you know, in, before the end of 2023, as we uh, approach, you know, uh, in a week or two, it's going to be Thanksgiving. And I couldn't be more thankful for you guys here on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel, and thankful just to be here and thankful for for, for all my family and friends. Uh, just remember that and what it's truly all about as we approach Christmas as well and the birth of Christ. And let, let's stay focused. So that's what happened in 1997, uh, the whole Montreal screw job. Cornette's channel has an unbelievable two and a half hour podcast uh, covering the whole screw job from back then. It's a must listen. Back into the time machine. We're going to go forward to go back and back to go forward. November 10th, 2000, Lance Storm defeats General Reaction, a.k.a. Hugh Morris, uh, a.k.a. Bill DeMott, for the WCW United States title in London, starting Lance Storm's third and final reign with that belt. Lance Storm, as one of the ECW uh, Impact players, really was one heck of a worker. He wasn't Mr. Charisma, but get him in a ring and he'll tear you apart and wrap you up in a pretzel. Just like a pretzel, Lance Storm. That was November 10th, 2000. November 10th, 2009, Jamie Noble announces his retirement as an active wrestler to work as an agent for the WWE, which they now call a producer. Show you how much the, the business has changed. Back into the time machine. November 10th, 2010, TNA... Not tits and ass. Total nonstop action. Although Vince's Russo's immaturity, uh, allegedly, that's what TNA was all about. <laughs> Big joke, right? It is what it is. It was a solid group at one time. And we'll see what Impact does going into 2024 with the name change. Uh, it's not a bad product. TNA signed Kevin Nash. But listen to this. Although he would not, to re not return to TV for TNA. While he was signed, who the fuck can get away with that? Nash denied the reports, but then he showed up on Monday Night Raw as Diesel. What a joke of a gimmick that was. Let's face it, Nash is a Hall of Famer, a legend, the big man. I've even worked a couple of events with him. Pretty cool guy to me. But his gimmicks of, as Oz and Vinny Vegas and... Diesel and I believe was part of the Master Blasters. I mean, they really went through a lot of different gimmicks and characters before he became uh, Big Daddy Cool, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Which I believe he stole the name from me as Big Daddy, just added the cool on to a big sexy, whatever you want to call it. But cutting edge when Hall and Nash went to WCW for the, the NWO and really changed a lot of the factions in the business and what we have up to today from D Generation X all the way up to the different groups and factions they have in 2023. Now, Nash ended up, as I said, here in 2010, November 10th, ended up at the Royal Rumble as Diesel. And now, according to TNA president Dixie Carter, no offense, Dixie, but you had your head up your ass and you got taken as a sucker for all your money during those years. She stated she had granted Nash a release from his deal. Still paid him, though, right? Boy, I tell you, it really is something in the, in the business. Even back then, a lot, a lot has changed with politics. Storylines may be a lot different, talent a lot different, but the politics certainly hasn't changed. Let's stay in November 10th, 2010. Michael B. Solomon, then director of the WWE uh, Incorporated, since August of 2001, so for a good nine years, he stepped down from that position as director of WWE. Solomon, who was 62 at the time, was a managing partner for Gladwin Partners LLC, and no reason was given. Hmm. Did he resign? Future endeavored? Who knows? But that's 2010 when the director of WWE, Inc., stepped down, Michael B. Solomon. Back into the time machine, November 10th, 2011. The WWE unveils the logo for their WWE Network, which didn't launch until February 2014. Three years later, 
that goes to show you the planning that goes into a lot of the things, whether it be the talent, the gimmicks, the storylines, long-term booking, um, if they even use it at times. Vince was decent at it years ahead of schedule. That's a perfect example. It was unveiled, the logo, but they didn't use it until over three years later. And the reason why I'm giving you all these tidbits of information, there wasn't a lot going on on today in pro wrestling history. So that's why I'm coming up with these random notes, uh, although historical facts. Let's stay in November 10th, 2011. 1960s and 1970s legend Killer Carl Cox passes at the age of 80. Now, Cox had had a heart attack, and then later on, a couple of months later, actually a, a month later, followed by a stroke. He had a heart attack in October of 2011, followed by a stroke, and passes away this date in history, November 10th, 2011. And do your research on Killer Carl Cox, one of the best heels in the business, a true legend at 80 years old. November 10th, 2012. Tickets for WrestleMania 29 in East Rutherford, New Jersey went on sale. WWE sources indicate that the first day's sales were between 45 and 50,000 sold and over $10 million at the gate. How about that for ticket sales? When it was right here in the greater New England tri-state northeast area, that's WrestleMania 29. Ticket sales, November 10th, 2012. Back into the time machine here at Chaos Corner. November 10th, 2014. The WWE issues the following statement. Former WWE star Alberto Del Rio, uh, Paige's ex, Soraya, whatever you want to call her, and the WWE reach a mutual understanding with regards to future booking opportunities. Well, you know what that means. The WWE wishes uh, Del Rio the best in his future endeavors. I know a lot of people that have been future endeavored by the WWE just recently as well. No offense, man, because I know and you know that I know that you're watching. You know that I know that, right? And I don't give a fuck. My phone lines are open. My door's open. I'm not hard to find. Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it simple. But I know, and you know that I know, because I have all my analytics and I know who's on my channel. I know you're watching. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Good luck on your future endeavors, former talent and writers and producers and creators, whatever the fuck your jobs were in the WWE. No one wants to see anyone lose their job. It's a joke, man. It's a work. Kayfabe. Back into the time machine. November 10th, 2015. Hold on. No cough button here. No editing. <coughs> ah. November 10th, 2015. Tommy Dreamer and Virgil appear on Comedy Central's The Nightly Show as a part of a story about whether wrestling is racist. Take that and stick it up your ass. I have a million examples uh, where wrestling is not racist, whether you're male, female, white, black, Hispanic, uh, Asian, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, English, European, it, Canadian, it's all bullshit. Looking for stories and looking for ratings. When everybody that's involved in all this alleged bullshit, even back to 2015, they're all in it for the money. They're willing to sell their soul. So let that sink in. Tommy Dreamer said it is and has been, and no one has ever cared because it's fake. It's part of a storyline for all you libtards out there and all you people that want to call people racist. Take your head and stick it up your ass. And I apologize for this cussing. It's really not me. I apologize for it. It just happens at times. And you know, don't, don't take it too serious. And Virgil said it was all just to my point of what I said. Virgil said it was all about doing what was going to make you thousands of dollars. Just like the politicians, just like Hollywood, just like the music industry, just like the sports industry. Everybody that wants to cry all this racism and uh, equality and equity. Meanwhile, you are all privileged. Talk about privilege and living in a world that none of us could relate to. 
as you sit in your ivory towers with your private security and aren't affected by any of the current day situations. No matter who it is, no matter what race you are, let's remember that one blood, one race. If we could think about that, that we're all the same. We all put our pants on the same way. We all bleed the same way. That's my PSA. Uh, Virgil, like I said, said it was about the thousands of dollars. And that's when what happens when people sell themselves out. It was filmed at Pro Wrestling Syndicate uh, in Brooklyn, New York. 2015 on this date, November 10th in history. Let's uh, give a little uh, birthday shout out. Before that, let's hop back into the time machine. November 10th, 2017. Impact Wrestling tapings in Ottawa, Canada. Matt Seidel defeats EC3 to win the Grand Championship on this date in pro wrestling history. Today's birthdays, November 10th, 1996, the previously mentioned Bill DeMott turns 57. Happy birthday, Bill. And obviously, uh, due to tragedy, has turned it into positivity. The Bill DeMott Foundation uh, the Carrie Ann DeMott Foundation, Bill's daughter, who was tragically killed by a drunk driver years ago in an accident. And then Bill does his tireless work to raise awareness around the country. Go to YouTube, Facebook, all social media platforms and, and sign up for Bill DeMott's daughter and the unbelievable work that they do with the Carrie Ann DeMott Foundation. Happy birthday, Bill. This date, November 10th, 1950, Ace Cowboy Bob Orton Jr.'s birthday today. I don't want to give away your age, uh, Ace. Do you still have that cast on your forearm? When's Randy coming back to the WWE? What are the rumors? Give me a call. Hit me up, man, all right? 1981, November 10th, 1981, Ryback, right feed me more. Boy, does he have a lot of heat in the industry. Ryback turns 42 today. Also, on this date in history, November 10th, 1991, Dick the Bruiser, the legend, passes from a ruptured blood vessel in his esophagus while weightlifting. He died from internal bleeding. Dick the Bruiser was only 62 years old. Just about my age. What a way to go. Still trying to stay in shape and do the best thing. A ruptured blood vessel in his esophagus. Everyone be tr careful when you're out there training, especially if you're going heavy. It could happen to anyone at any time. Like I said, tomorrow's not guaranteed to anybody. Not even the rest of today. That's why prayer up. Put on your, uh, you know, your armor. And you know what I'm talking about. Because if he's for us, nobody can be against us. And I want to continue to put that out there in this trying times because we're living in some very special times if you don't know it. We are the chosen generation. That's just my opinion. It's in the big book. Read your scriptures. And I don't want to be overly religious or too political on here. I keep it pro wrestling. But in this day and age, how could you not mention it? How could you not talk about it? A lot of people out there are doubters, non-believers, protesters, uh, whatever it is one you call it. And that's your choice. You do you, and I'll do me. We all have the right to our own opinion, although the government's trying to take it away. I know I'm a little crazy on this show today, but I didn't have a lot of information, so I'll put out some real and let you get to know me. Also today, on a positive note, I want to end on a positive note, especially with the, the uh, um, premiere of Iron Claw with Zac Efron uh, about the, the, the Von Erich family. Today, November 10th, Marshall Von Erich turns 31 today. Happy birthday, Marshall, because I know we follow each other, yourself and your brother Ross, on, uh, on social media. So I hope you see this. Uh, happy birthday. Marshall Von Erich turns 31 today. And now, fans, it, it was an eclectic day, a kind of weird day for news and notes on this date in pro wrestling history. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, and, and again... Uh, I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for being here on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel. We're really catching on. And even if we don't, I'm still going to be here. If not just for me, for you, the fans, for the IWC, and to continue to send my message out there of positivity and, and stress relief 
and a much needed distraction. Who knows? And this will be up here forever for everybody to see long after I'm gone, including my beautiful family, my wife, my daughter, my son-in-law, and of course, my precious, beautiful granddaughter. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys, I honor you guys, and I honor our military all weekend. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back tomorrow. Veterans Day. And, and before I get out of here, big show tomorrow night. United by One. Type 1 Diabetes. Team CC. Several groups have gotten together here in the Northeast New England uh, tri-state area. The parents, the Vasquez family of CC, unbelievable. And tomorrow is going to be an unbelievable card with a lot of stars and a lot of local talent and local stars for an unbelievable cause. And that would be Team CC, united by one, tomorrow night in Hamden, Connecticut, live, a special meet and greet. And I believe bell time is at 7 or 8 p.m. Tickets are still available at the door. I'm a strong supporter of this show and a strong supporter of the cause. And of course, very proud of Cece herself. I salute Cece and the Vasquez family and United by One, type one for diabetes for what they're trying to do. What an inspiration. I'll say that to say this because I tell it like it is. Don't you dare miss it. <laughs>